simple. We'll just start here with the entrance door. So uh, you have a screen door that works on its own, or with the main door, it travels together. Yeah. Um, where they're supposed to. Oh, there we go. Uh, so anyways, yeah, they, they travel together. This is the deadbolt. So when you're on the inside, this little red latch here deploys the deadbolt. Okay. That is the very best way to secure the trailer whenever you're not in it, whenever you're going down the road. Mm. So this extra pin going into the side of the trailer is what keeps the door yeah. from flying open on you. So, so just kind of like a deficiency or, or puncture that is not going to create that one. If see something happen, you come back to the warranty. Oh yeah. I call you guys. Absolutely. That, right? Absolutely. So um, when you guys talk to Carissa, that's our finance lady, yeah. she'll tell you a little bit more about the warranty and all that kind of thing. Anything you guys see here today, mm. just let us know if you know if something doesn't look right to you or whatever. Everything will be covered by yeah. warranty. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyways, the deadbolt. Very best way to secure the trailer whenever you're not in it. Yeah. Um, highly recommend it when you're going down the road to have the deadbolt deployed and the, the door won't swing open on you. Oh, that's... Uh, the key locks here, right? Yeah, so on the outside, yeah, there's the key locks on the outside. Yeah. So you got your handle lock just for the handle, mm -hmm. and then this is the deadbolt. So you can deploy it on the inside or the outside. It's just the red levers for the inside, right. whenever you're on the inside there. So we have your awning. I can't exactly show you fully extended. Okay, uh, so yeah. at the very end of the tube here, um, about maybe six inches past this, a little flap starts to hang down, uh, and it's the same material. Uh, and so when you, whenever you see the flap, you don't really want to extend it past that. So it is just extend and retract. Um, and so there's no real stopping point for it kind of thing. So when you see the little flap hanging down at the end, that's as far as you want to look. Okay. Uh, you won't get any more fabric out of it if you keep rolling it. Actually what happens is the, the awning rolls up backwards. So it's just a tube and a tarp. And so when it gets all the way out and the flap comes down, if you keep going, it'll actually start to roll up backwards. Oh. So it's not a big deal. Uh, easiest way to fix it is just unroll it again. So for this one, just uh, just keep on motor here, it's just kind of rolling the tube here. Yeah, yeah, tube and tarp. Um, not, not really a heck of, not a lot to it, really. So yeah, anyways, a little bit past this point here, you'll see a little, a little flap hanging down at the end, and that's as far as you want to go. Okay. Um, so just some basic stuff about awnings. They don't like weather of any kind, uh, especially around here. They really don't like wind. Uh, wind oh. is wind can actually well it can turn it into a kite yeah, actually yeah. pretty well. I see. Um, so I would recommend whenever you're not using the awning or with the trailer to have it rolled in. It is. I'll show you the panel or the button on the inside. It's nice and easy to roll in. So keeping it uh, rolled into the inside or rolled up is the best way to make sure it's not going to be uh, twisted up on you the next time you come and look at it kind of thing. Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, and so there is also a um, pitch feature on either side. So on either arm, there is this guy here. So if you did want to use the awning while it's raining outside, you can still do that. Okay. Uh, and you can have the rain beat off one way or the other by yeah. pulling down the arms. I see. Uh, but I always like to recommend to put this back to straight, original, before you bring the awning in. Okay. Uh, no matter how you have this, the awning will roll in, mm -hmm. but just to make sure you're not going to have any problems putting it back to original. So there's some the manual you can No, not, well there is, but they don't include the bar for it. So it is just, yeah, unlike what, the... What if the, in the water field? <laughs> kind of stuck then, okay. unfortunately. Yeah, no. Uh, so there, there is a manual reset bar you can get for for the awning to roll it in, but they never include it with the unit. So that is something that could be ordered. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, usually, if you make sure that the wind doesn't catch it, or if you don't hit anything with the awning, nothing's really going to go too wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, whenever you're rolling the awning out, take your time. Okay, I see. Yeah, whenever you're rolling the awning out, just take your time, make sure you're looking around, uh, make sure you're not going to hit anything with it, and you probably won't have any issues with it. We uh, we don't hear of a lot of issues. The wind is just the big one, because even you can you can see here, we got a little bit of a draft, and it likes to flap a little bit, so a good gust of wind is a, really the enemy. Uh, yeah. I'm so uh, curious, uh, how much is the spare motor? Uh, the spare bar? The motor. Or a whole the new motor. motor. Oh! I have no idea. Oh, okay. I, I, I couldn't tell you. We, we could find out what a new motor is worth. Uh, but at the same time, you probably won't have to replace it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, as long as you're uh, taking your time and looking for things around, you probably won't have any issues with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so there's also, of course, the uh, feature on the other arm. 
You yeah. can use them both at once and kind of bring the awning down on both sides a little bit more. But just like I said, putting it back to the original before you bring it in is the best way to make sure it's always going to operate smoothly. So, good, yeah. Perfect. I uh, just want to make sure I'm not skipping anything. We got two speakers out here. Uh, this is speaker zone two. So you can, tr you can okay. turn this zone off, you can turn the other one off, however you want to do it. It's all controlled by the stereo on yeah. the inside. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll play with that when we get in there. AC outlet here on the outside. So of course, for whatever you want, you can run a little bit of power out here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we come to your exterior kitchen. So this fridge here will only work when the unit's plugged in. So it's not gonna run on the battery. It's not gonna run on propane. Uh, there is a small little temperature dial inside there, so of course set your temperature however you like to use it. And there's also the freezer box as Does well. this run now 120 or 12? Uh, 120. 120, One, so, so yeah. I can use it at home, like, bring it out to my Oh, home. you could, yeah, absolutely. So it's got a, a plug-in probably right on the very back or the top. So you can pull the fridge out and use it however you want to. But yeah, this will only work when the trailer is plugged in with shore power for a 110 circuit. Yeah. Then we have your barbecue. So this is a manual light barbecue, so you will need a barbecue later. Mm. Um, so I have it all hooked up right now. I'll show you how all that goes together, but you just twist it on, the gas is coming through, you light it. Okay. That's all there is to it. And then yeah, all the way down is off. Yeah. Perfect. So I'll just fold these flaps in here and close this guy up. But before I bring this in, I'm just gonna show you where it connects down here. Right. So there is a ball valve. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that there, right there. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn off the ball valve. So I just turned it yep. off and then the quick connect, you just push in the collar and you pop out the hose oh, and there's great. this little yellow plug here that goes in just to keep the dirt and salt out of there. Yeah, and yeah. then with this guy here, you just kind of feed it back into the cavity and push her in. That's all there is to it. Um, yeah, a uh, little travel strap here as well for the fridge. So it's not going to fly open while you're uh, going down the bouncy road somewhere. Yeah. And there's a magnet holding up the door. Um, something about the magnet, again, with a good Saskatchewan wind, it can bring the door down on you. So if you are using this on the outside, just be aware that a good gust of wind can actually bring it down on you. Yeah. So then there's the two uh, latches here on either side. And then there's this key lock. This is called a 751 key lock. So uh, it's a fairly universal lock. I can tell you right now that every trailer owner pretty much has the key to unlock this. Gotcha. So it does lock, but at the same time, it's not super secure. Uh, I, all I would say is just don't store anything of incredible value inside yeah. here and then you're good to go. Okay. Um, not, not that there's much storage in there anyways, but I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, we have a little spray port right here. Uh, so this is a cold water line. Um, there's also another part on the trailer or at the front, I'll show you, uh, where that same hose is used over there. Mm -hmm. But anyways, you connect the hose here, and then you've got cold water. So anyways, when I show you the hose, this will make a little more sense to you. That's the same hose on either side kind of thing. So I'll show you that when we get there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess moving on here. You have a nice, convenient ladder going up to the roof. Um, so whenever you get the unit home, I would highly recommend taking a couple minutes to just kind of go up there yourself and just have a look at things. So of course, everything is the way it's supposed to be right now. Everything's brand new, uh, flawless kind of thing. So if you have a look at it brand new, as the years go on, you'll be able to recognize if there is an issue. Um, the most common issue right off the bat, a couple of years down the road, is at the ceiling that's around all the accessories on the roof. It, it does begin to crack and erode away. Um, so it is good to kind of see what it looks like new, yeah. so that as so you'd be able to recognize if it's not looking so good after a while. Yeah, we yeah we can do that absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and you know there's actually so many YouTube videos out there now for winterizing that I'm sure exactly. you could actually find a YouTube video or two if you wanted to do it yourself. Okay. Um, so there, there is lots of how-to videos and stuff like that out there. Um, it's all up to you, but of course we can do that for you for okay. sure. Uh, you got your back door here to the bunk room. <laughs> got your back door here to the bunk room. So, um, of course, the bed folds up. Yeah. And then there's a latch here to kind of hold it up in position. Right. So you kind of have a little hallway of storage when there's nobody sleeping back there. Uh, and then this little black panel here is the converter panel. The converter. So the converter panel. So this converts the AC into DC yeah. power, so it uh, can be used in the trailer. Really, you don't have to come in here much at all, unless there's an electrical issue kind of thing. 
Uh, so on this side here, whenever you're plugged in, these are the breakers you'll be looking at. That's the 110 side, oh. just regular house looking so breakers. Breakers here. Yeah. So yep. that's the main switch here. Yep. If I bring this down, everything's shut. It will? Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, on the other side there, that's all the 12 volt fuses. Okay. So on this side right here, all those stick <clears throat> fuses, those are the 12 volt fuses. So if you're running off just the battery, that will, that's where you're going to be looking is a 12 volt fuse side. Um, so you'll probably notice there's lots of 15 amp fuses yeah. in there. I would highly recommend buying a, a little $2 box of them uh, and just kind of keep them in the drawer. You'll probably never ever need them, yeah. but at the same time, it can save you in a pinch uh, if there is uh, something going wrong electrically. Normally though, when something on the panel flips or pops or whatever, that's an indication of a bigger issue. Yeah. So just changing the fuse may not actually help, but at the same time, it is good to still have them on hand just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'll just close this guy up here. I guess something else to tell you about the converter panel. There's a fan that runs on, on the inside there. With all the lights on and everything working, it's fairly loud. But at nighttime, when, it, when uh, all the lights are shut off and it's not working so hard, it gets much quieter. So oh. whoever's sleeping in the bunk beds, they won't be as annoied by it. Thank you. Yeah, there's a fan in there that's always running whenever you're plugged in. Okay. But as I said, when you turn off the lights and everything's not really working so hard, it gets much quieter. Okay, Perfect. Yeah. And then we've got your spare tire. So it's exactly the same as the other four tires on the unit. It's not a donut. It is a full replacement. Hopefully you'll never need it, but there it is. Okay. Yeah. And of course, we'll get your license plate put on here in a little bit. Did you guys bring a license plate today? Yeah. It's good Sweet. Here. Awesome. Like to hear it. Like to hear it. Uh, moving on here, we've got the sewer dumps. So it's on the very bottom here. We have the cap. So of course this guy twists off, uh, and you know what, let me grab the starter kit. I see a sewer hose. It's 10 feet long. Okay. So really you don't need much more than 10 feet yeah, because it just goes on, on and then into the ground. The, the hose twists on where the cap came off and you've got 10 feet into the ground. Um, so as you can see you've got a gray tank label and a black tank label. So um, yeah, the black tank of course is your toilet waste. Gray is everything else. Right. Um, so yeah, always recommend to dump the black first. It's got the most chunky sediment stuff uh, in very, it. Yeah. And then the gray after that helps wash the line out. Yeah. Um, also something I highly recommend is pretty much always leaving the valves closed. So I guess I'll just show you here. So they're closed right now, and then this is open. So the oh. first yeah, so the first time you come and use the unit, only antifreeze and water have been inside here. So no worries if something splashes out at you, but of course, once you start using it, you'll have your normal uh, waste and all that kind of stuff in there. So anyways, with the valves pushed in, that's closed. Yeah, so when the valves are pushed in, the tanks are closed. Uh, and that's actually the best way to leave it all the time. The only time you open them really is to dump yeah. the system. As soon as you're done dumping, close them again. Okay. So the point of that is that uh, you keep the tanks wet. So. Some people will be tempted to hook up their hose, run it into the ground, and then just leave the valves open. And that way everything just free flows into the ground. Yeah. Uh, the only problem with that is that um, the wet stuff usually goes right away, but then the chunky stuff stays behind, yeah. eventually leading to a clog. So if you just leave your valves closed all the time, fill up your tanks, and then once they're almost full, that's when you go outside and dump them, yeah. and then close the valves again. Okay. Uh, it'll just make everything work flawlessly. Uh, compared to uh, eventually leading to a clog if you kind of just let it all free flow kind of thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd recommend. There is also what's called the Sani flush line. So this is a water line that goes just to the black tank. Yeah. I so, uh, yeah, so when you're dumping the black tank, you can have your water pressure hose hooked up here and it actually sprays the inside of the tank while you're dumping. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice way to kind of keep push everything along sort of deal if it needs a little bit of extra help. Yeah, so all of the monitor panels on the inside, I'll show you that. So yeah, uh, you can watch your tanks go from empty to one-thirds, two-thirds full. I hear you. Yep. And then yeah, full is the best time to dump or almost full. That way gravity kind of just does its thing and lets it all out and good to go. Uh, then we have your power cord here. So you can see there's a little dummy light on the top of the cap telling you you're, you're getting power from the cord to the trailer. There's also a dummy light on the other end of the cord. Oh, where it plugs in, so it kind of shows you. So I'll, I'll show, I guess I'll just show you how it comes apart here as well. So you have a spin lock that holds the whole thing on there, and then there's just, just a little twist and a pull. Okay. So I always look for the funny one, and the funny one 
and just kind of line it up, give it a little jiggle one way or the other. Okay. And then it locks onto there and it'll spin lock. And then, yeah, like I said, there's an, a dummy light at the end of the cord that tells you that you're getting power from whatever your source is to the okay. cord. Um, yeah, there's actually a power adapter that also comes in here. That's this little guy right there, that little yellow that guy. Works. Yeah. So yeah, that'll plug, make your 30 amp power cord plug into a regular 110 outlet on the side of your house kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that being said, that's about half the power of what the unit requires. Gotcha. So uh, you can charge your battery, you can run a few lights, turn on the fridge, that sort of thing. But as soon as you turn on a microwave, air conditioner, anything that requires a lot of power, you could pop the breaker on your house or wherever you're hooked up to. Uh, I guess I'll just tell you what else is in here since I'm at it. Uh, there's a wash and wax on the side here, directions on the bottle if you want to use that. Uh, and then you've got a 25 foot fresh water hose right here. So that'll be for doing your sandy flush or for hooking up your water stuff. I'll show you that in a minute here. That's what that hose is for. When you're uh, using the unit, you can put those in your toilet as you're using it. Uh, and since whenever you flush the toilet, it is a straight airway from the black tank coming up whenever you flush it. So when you put those in there, it makes it a little, uh, not not so bad kind of thing. It's just, they're just deodorant packs. Okay. And then there's RV toilet paper. Do you know about RV toilet paper? Yeah. Always stick with RV toilet paper. Charmin, Purex, the big comfort brands, they don't break down quite mm. as easily as the RV stuff. Mm. So that's why it's, it's pretty imperative actually that you use the RV stuff. Otherwise, it'll just lead to a clog sooner or later, that kind of thing. Yeah. Also, uh, the Charmin and Purex, they like to clog up the sensors on the tank so you know oh. how you can read the sensors. Yeah. Sometimes it'll tell you your tank is full when it's actually empty, but that's just because of toilet paper getting left behind. So always use the RV stuff, you'll never have a problem. This little guy down here is your furnace exhaust. So really not too much to tell you there, except don't put your patio chair in front of it. It's yeah. not hard to turn on. So in the event that it does, keeping everything out of the way is the best way to go. I see. Perfect. Okay. And then yeah, the furnace and then yeah, we've got your fridge right here. So I've got the panel opened up. You don't really have to take the panel off too yep. often. Um, but when you do have the panel off, I would highly recommend uh, for sure. Number one is to check that this condensate hose is right where it is. So when the fridge is working, it makes condensation and that has to drain. Uh, if it's hooked up here with the door on, this will drain to the outside. Oh, okay. Otherwise, uh, if, if, if for some reason this comes off, well, you know, no, one's, no one really notices or anything like that, this actually will drain to the inside of the unit. So, so see it's draining from here? Yeah, so when the door is on, when the door is on, it dribbles down the side of the door and out. I hear you. Yeah, yeah so, but of course, if your door isn't on or if, uh, if this isn't in the, in the right spot, mm -hmm. uh, it could potentially drain into the, into the RV. And so, of course, we don't want that. That's not good. Uh, so just whenever you can, always make sure that the, the drain hose is in the right spot. Your door is nicely secured. And that's really all there is to it. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then whenever it's convenient, uh, if, if, if you have anything to do uh, with an air hose or an air line kind of thing, you can just blow out this whole cavity just the way you see it here. So just take an air hose and just kind of run it back and forth. Uh, lots of dust, bugs, all kinds of stuff that tries to get in there yeah. will kind of come out. To make the propane plants uh, keep running smoothly, it's good to just have it as dust free as possible. A filter? Yeah, to prevent all the dust or... No, actually you, you want the air movement. So that is, that is how the fridge works. You do want to have air movement through there. You never ever want to plug off these holes. Mm -hmm. They are there for a reason. I know it's a pain in the butt, dust getting in there, bugs getting in there, but it is bent, venting for a reason. But I'll just show you how the door goes on here. Yeah. So I have a flathead screwdriver. Mm. You don't necessarily need one, but I'll just show you how it goes on here. So four little tabs at the bottom, and then you have push in at the top. And once it's pushed in like that, you can use your flathead screwdriver to turn this over, gotcha. and that expands the rivet on the inside. Yeah, yeah. And so it is locked on there. So of course, this is normally how you'll see it, normally how you'll use it. And you'll see water dribbling down the side here, and that's exactly what you want. I see, I see, yeah. Perfect. I'm going to leave this off, though, so I don't remember, or I don't forget, to make sure that cover goes back on. Perfect. So I'll just leave this off here. Right on. Uh, rain should exhaust. Is what this is. is. That's a part for the, for the yes. That's, yeah, so this is just the outside panel for the fridge. I'll show you on the inside, on the fridge, how to operate it. There the uh, on and off buttons and stuff like that. Perfect, yeah. So this is your range hood, this is above the stove. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little flapper on the inside here. So when this is open, uh, just like this, whenever you use the range hood, it will exhaust outside directly. Uh, but whenever you're not using the range hood, 
whenever you're going down the road, whenever you're in transit, I would highly recommend there's two little flaps on the side. Can you see those? Oh, okay. that kind of push I over. I see. And it secures the flapper in place. Perfect. Yeah. So if you don't secure the flapper when you go down the highway, it will fall out. Oh, it does not like 100 kilometer an hour winds. And then as soon as that flapper falls out, unfortunately, it's a straight access for birds and bugs and whatever to try to get in there. So um, always make sure that your flapper is secure whenever you go down the road. Perfect. Moving along here. Uh, this is your water heater. So it runs on propane and electric. Electric only when you're plugged in. And then of course there's propane as well. So I'll show you the switches, how to operate it on the inside. They're just on off switches. Um, so most, in, most water heaters, um, they're made with steel tanks. So you have to have an anode rod right. that goes in them. It's kind of just like one you find in your house. Yeah. And the anode rod is kind of just like the sacrificial piece that uh, the crap in the water eats the rod before the tank. Anyways, this doesn't have that because it's insulated with glass. So there is no need for an anode rod. Instead, you just have a cap. Oh, so nice and easy to fill the water heater. You got to put the cap on. So a little bit of Teflon tape and a little mini wrench is all you need to kind of seal that on there. Mm. Uh, and then uh, water can go into the unit and that is a little control for that. I have this all taken apart here. So here's the side of the water heater. At the moment, it is in bypass mode, which means that uh, the water heater is sectioned off from all the other water lines. In other words, it can be drained um, and then it's not going to affect any of the rest of the water lines. Okay. So anyways, just on the inside here, there's two valves. Do you see the one that's down here? It's blue. Yeah. And there's the exact same one up there. It's on the red oh. line. Yeah, yeah. So right now it's in bypass mode, which means that the water follows this tube on the side. Yeah. All of your cold lines are hot or all of your hot lines are cold. Yeah, I hear you. And then the other way, the out of bypass position is facing a little valve towards the water here. Yeah just like so, which means normal operation. So when you flip those valves over, now water is coming through the water heater. Yeah. So with your cap on, of course you can fill the water heater. Uh, this is the top of the tank right here, the pressure relief valve. Okay. Um, and so yeah, once you have water in there, you can... So if you compare that to a 40 or a 50 that you find in a house, it's very small. Yeah. Yeah. It's very small and yet, but even if you, you can use both of the elements at once, if you had a bunch of people that wanted to shower all one after the other kind of a thing, you can use both the elements on the water heater to make the water heater regenerate its heat quickly. Um, but otherwise, of course, using just the electric element is the best thing to use because you're at an electrified campsite usually, so why use the propane when you can just use electric? Right, um, so something with the electric elements is you'll always want to make sure that there's water inside the water heater before you turn it on. So as I said, it's just a little switch on the inside to turn on the electric element. Um, but if someone was to do it right now, if someone was to turn on the electric element with no water inside the water heater, it will burn out right away. Uh, so just to avoid that, always make sure there's water on the inside of the water heater. Best way to tell is uh, when you put water to it, as we do, as we did on those valves on the side, uh, if you flip this guy open and a bunch of water pours out, that tells you that the water heater is full. Right. So you, so you can always check to make sure your water heater is full before you turn the electric element on. So with winterizing, you put it into bypass mode with the valves on the side, section it off from the rest of the water lines, and then that's when you go to take your cap off and drain the water heater. So just before you take the cap off though, you will want to use this guy again to make sure that you relieve the pressure that's inside the tank. Otherwise, when you take this guy off, it will shoot off like a rocket kind of thing. So everything in this compartment can get wet. Oh, everything's good to go. Absolutely. No, I know it looks like wiring and water. It doesn't sound good, but no, everything in here is made to get wet. Uh, it's at least water resistant. Um, so a little bit of wetness all over the place is not going to hurt anything. Um, so yeah, just make sure you relieve the pressure before you take the cap off, right, otherwise the cap will shoot off with the pressure that's in the tank. In the United States, yeah, yeah. where these come from, they, they usually do use air to blow out the water out of the water line. Yeah, yeah. Here, at least the Village RV, we use antifreeze, so we fill all the water lines with antifreeze, rather than blowing them all out. Because there is potentially a chance that when you blow out water from the water lines, 
you actually don't get everything all at once. So the yeah. antifreeze is good for minus 40? Yeah, so the thing with antifreeze is that it does freeze, but it doesn't expand like water. So water expands when it freezes, uh, but antifreeze, it freezes, but it doesn't expand. So that's why we fill each water line with uh, with antifreeze, and then that way nothing's ever going to blow up on you kind of thing, come springtime. Okay. Um, what else to tell you here? Yes, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a little spring latch that holds the door on. So this little guy here, you just pull it out, you flip it over. Oh, so this is, of course, how you'll normally see the water heater. Yeah. So I guess while I'm uh, thinking about it and talking about it, do you guys want this summarized? Which means that we're, we'll get, of course, it's winterized right now. It's all ready to sit outside for the winter. But do you want us to make it ready to go for summer? Exactly. You do? Yeah. Okay, great. So when we're done the show through, I'll put water. Oops, I'll put water inside the unit, and uh, we'll make. I'll fill up your water heater and all that, so it's just ready for you guys to use. Yeah. You want. Perfect. Perfect. Free of yeah. card. Free of card. Right? Yes. Yes. No. Uh, we just we, we don't normally do that until May long weekend, just because it still can freeze at yeah. nighttime, kind of thing. So we never actually do it unless you request. Yeah. So if you want us to. Going to ask you. Have you guys do an initial test on all the tubings? Oh the yeah. Actions? Oh yeah. So. We do what's called a PDI, uh, pre-delivery inspection. Yeah. So with that, we test everything. We look at, we look at, we test every single thing. Uh, with the water lines, we hook up our uh, air pressure, uh, air pressure gauge to it. And we put air in the system, and then we sit there and wait to see if any of it leaks out, kind of thing. So all the testing has been done on this. Nothing to worry about. Everything's good to go. If you're leaving it here, then we can definitely do that before you take it. Sounds good. This panel here to go to get to your bypass for the water heater. That's just four screws. I took them out down here. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be put back together for you as well. Uh, so yeah, we come to what we call the wet box area. So all your water controls. So city water connection is your direct in. So if you have a water pressure hose with the you know the garden hose end on it, just like that. Yeah. You feed it up or put it up to here, and then just twist it on. Yeah. And when you turn on the water, that's gonna feed everything on the other side. It keeps connected all the time. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, so where is this uh, city water connection? These two. So that goes to a tank or it's straight right. you go, goes to the line? No, that's direct. So when you hook up your hose with water pressure in it here, it'll feed everything on the inside. Everything will work off of that pressure. Oh. If you don't have a direct all the time, you fill your fresh tank. Gotcha. And then okay. using the water pump, that supplies the pressure to all the fixtures. There's no way to overfill the fresh tank when you when you put your hose in here and start filling. Uh, there's no way to overfill it. It'll actually just kind of come back out of the hose. Okay. Uh, if it's too full, kind of thing. But of course, what's one more thing you can look on the monitor panel on the inside? You can watch the tank fill up. Yeah, yeah. Or drain, or however you want to do it. Okay. So for the fresh water connection, just back here, there is a blue water line. See this guy? Oh, there's a little bit of water in there, I guess. So of course, to fill the fresh water tank, close it, and then uh, open it to drain it. Oh, so that's a drain line for the fresh water. It is. Yeah. Okay, so it's good. Perfect. So, something with the fresh tank, um, I would highly recommend, if you can, dumping all the tanks before you move the trailer. Uh, just because it's a waste of gas to kind of pull around a whole bunch of extra liquid yep. kind of thing. So, depending on where you're going and what you're doing, I would recommend going with as empty of a tanks as you can have. Just for the fresh or for all three? For all of them. For all of them. So, the unit is designed to go down the road with full fresh tank, full black and gray tank, all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But just to make sure you're not uh, putting as much wear and tear on the unit, having them as empty as possible is the best way to go. So yeah, depending on how full your tanks are, how much stuff you got inside your trailer and stuff like that, of course those weights change drastically. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyways, there is this little port down here. Whenever you're hooking up your city water or pretty much any other connection in here, you can have your hoses run up through here and yeah. be connected so you can have the door closed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, leaving this open is a good thing too, just in case anything did dribble or something inside here, it's just going to go down and open. So just having that open is just a really good way to go. Okay. Uh, so here's your external shower. So on the other side there, I was talking about the, the hose mm -hmm. uh, that quick connects in. Uh, and then you have your cold water over there. So with that other connection, as soon as you put the quick connect in, water is coming. Oh. So 
You just have to be aware that water is coming as soon as you hook it up. Yep. Yeah. So you can put a garden hose sprayer on there. Oh, you can hook up another hose, however you want to do it. Just make sure that you know whenever you hook it up, water is coming. Gotcha. Yep. That kind of thing. Where this this one's a little bit different. Of course, you've got your hot and your cold mm. uh, taps there. So you can hook this guy up here. Push in the collar, hook this guy in, and then when you pull on it and it's locked in there, it's good to go. Okay. So then once again, um, as soon as you turn on your hot and cold, it's coming out here. Yeah. Yeah. So the nice thing about this is with the garden hose end on here, you could actually put another garden hose on the end of this yeah. and take it anywhere on the unit and wash. Uh, and then using the hot water, of course, that's the best thing to wash right. anything with. Um, I would actually recommend putting a hose on here and washing the awning with yeah. that if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's all up to you how you want to use it. That's your external shower there. Uh, then there's your cable and satellite input. So if you had an external satellite dish, yeah. or if you had cable at your campsite, all of that can be run in through here. And when you hook up to these two bits, that feeds everything on the inside. Yeah, so I got that part. I saw that from the video. No, you should video, yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'm doing some research then. Right. Good. Good. No, that's good. Absolutely. So there's also pre-wiring in the route. Uh, for it for a satellite. So if you wanted to hook up a permanent satellite dish, okay. there is wiring inside the roof. And then yeah, the wiring goes up to the antenna that's up there, and then of course it's just the other end of the cord. So you hook this up to the satellite right up there. And if you had a satellite dish on the roof, it's, uh, it's all pre-wired for you. Um, so if that falls off, I'll show you here. Actually, I have this opened up here. Oh, I see that. I see to that. show you the water pump. So just in yeah. case this falls down, it will still just be hanging inside there. No big deal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I took the three screws out to open up this panel so you can see the water pump. When it comes to winterizing, that is where you'd want to hook in the antifreeze. Um, so on the other side here, I'll, just, I'll show you on this side. There's a uh, two little pressure tabs. So when you pull them out, you can pull the water line out, and then you put in an antifreeze, uh, antifreeze water. Yeah. Antifreeze water line. Yeah. All you really need to know is that the far side of the pump, uh, not this side here, the other side is where you'll want to dismantle it. Put the antifreeze in. It is a pain in the butt, but then you really only have to, once you've done it once or twice. You'll see what I mean. It's nice and easy. Okay. But uh, of course, if you want us to winterize it at the end of the season, that is something we can do. And then there will be lots of YouTube videos for that as well, uh, for winterizing. YouTube will make a lot more sense of it than I just probably did. Um, there is lots of Keystone videos uh, for, for their trailers, but then there's every... Uh, winterizing is always the same process. The only thing that's every different about it is where your water pump is, where your water heater is, that kind of thing. So it's just the locations of things that change. It's not so much the process. So any of the winterizing videos you find online, they will probably tell you the exact same thing as to how to winterize and all that kind of thing. A little push button light up here, what to do. Yeah, yeah. And then on this wall here, we have the stability jack controls. Um, so, actually, I guess just before I move on here, I have a drill. I would always recommend having a drill with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number two, Robertson. Robertson. If you have this bit, the middle square bit, you can work on any screw in the trailer. So it is really good just to have on hand just in case. Oh, so they're all Robertson. 98% of them are. Yeah, so it's not a bad thing to have on hand just in case kind of thing. Yeah. And that is how I opened up all these different screws. Number two, Robertson. But anyways, uh, stability jack controls. So stability jacks are used just to stabilize the trailer. So they're not meant to lift it or level it in any way. They're actually just meant to be feet that touch the ground. So, um, here's a good example. I brought it part of the way down. Uh, but as you can see, the foot on the other side is not going to land flat. So I'm just going to fix that. We saw what I did there, how I made sure it's going to land nice and flat when I bring it the rest of the way down. Yeah. So as soon as the feet both touch the ground, You'll hear the motor tense up just a little bit, and that's as far as you want to go. So, so if I keep pushing that, it will still going far. Yeah, it'll actually start to boost the trailer, oh. and you don't want that. So, uh, it is, they are steel bars, but they're not meant to handle the weight of the trailer. Okay, they're just yeah. meant to touch the ground as extra feet. Oh. If you start lifting the trailer with that, anyone on the inside, is, if there's a little bit of movement, they can actually break the jacks. So there's so, no mechanism to stop to it. To stop fire. it. No, it's just a... I hear you. I yeah, hear it's just you. as soon as it touches the ground. 
I'll just do this again here. Maybe you'll see it. Uh, you'll hear it tense up a little bit. The motor changes a little bit. So you can see how it kind of struggled there for a second. That's as far as you want to go. Okay, I got you. I got you. Just yeah. Here. And it's the same with the back one as well. Always make sure that when the jacks are coming down that your feet are going to land flat on the ground. Having a look around to make sure you're not going to land on anything you don't want to. All that kind of stuff. And then yeah, just making sure your feet land flat. Either way though, as soon as one foot, foot touches down, the next one will come. Yeah, well, hopefully I never use this. But hopefully just, not, but yeah, that's what this is here, so don't lose that. Yeah. Uh, this other bar here is for your front tongue jack. So. I got you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so just in case you didn't have power, you can still operate this guy. This rubber plug comes out. This guy goes in here and you can operate it up and down. Good, okay, good. Okay. So yeah, don't lose these. <laughs> yeah. These are good to have. Hopefully you'll never need them, but there they are. Okay. And I guess we'll just go back in here. Or up here, I should say. So, yeah, uh, name, name tag, or what I call the name tag. It's got your VIN number, it's got your model number, and then, yeah, a little bit of weight information. Um, the second one down here is loaded vehicle weight. Now, of course, that's an estimate, depending on how actually full your tanks are or how much uh, contents you have in here. That'll always change, but this is always an estimate. So, just so you know. Do you guys have a weight here, like the weight for the truck or for the everything? Um, scale? I mean, scale, no. Not really. We always look at the truck, the hitch, and the trailer. So there's three different weights that all kind of get configured together. Down here, this is external solar panel input. So if you had external solar panels, the wiring that comes with the panel is wired in directly to here, and it charges the battery, it'll do whatever your solar panel needs. So if you have that, there it is. Otherwise, it's just a, just a little rubber tag there. Uh, and then this is a got the red wire and the black wire this is coming from the converter so converting 110 ac into 12 volt dc so as long as these wires are hooked up here um that's that's well that's really all there is to it that's uh, normally how you'll see it um of course when it comes to winterizing taking off the negative wire is the best way to disconnect the battery so it's not being drawn from it's going to remain in the same state uh, there's also though a battery disconnect just over here there's a little red knob right here. Yeah. So right now it's in the power on position. I don't know if you can read that or see that there. Yeah. No. There's the power off position, which is just the next one over. Gotcha. And there's also an extra position here for remove covers. So this is really only if you're going to take this apart. You have to put it to the remove cover position to take this black cover off. What's inside? Uh, all the wiring. Uh, it's pretty much the meat and potatoes of the wiring. You never really have to go in there yourself. It's just whoever does work on it, they uh, they need to, whenever they need to remove this cover, this has to go in that position. So you never have to worry about it. It's just off and it's on. So this is a, a disconnect just for the battery. Yeah. So totally separate kind of from what the what's happening there with the converter in the back. Okay. Uh, when this is on, the battery is being charged and drawn from. Yeah. When this is off, the battery is just taken out of the system. So everything works the same as it would with your normal power cord. Yeah. But this is just making sure the battery isn't connected. So it's not being charged or drawn from. So does this uh, charge when I was hooked up with my truck? Yes. Okay. But as long as this is in the on oh, sure. position. Yeah, sure. so as long as your battery's hooked up, then yeah, it will be a trickle charge coming from the truck. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so there's a, there's a cover that goes on there. You'll see it and there's a strap. I'll put that on for you guys. Otherwise, yeah. next we've got the propane system. So the whole on and off of the system is right on the tanks themselves. If your tanks are off, nothing's going to work on propane. Um, so this is the regulator. This controls the flow from the tanks to all the appliances on the inside of the unit. The only thing to worry about on here is a little directional arrow. So this chooses which tank to draw from first. Yeah. So in this position, it's going to draw from this one. It does have an automatic switchover feature so that if this tank runs out of gas, it'll automatically try to draw from this one without having to do anything. But the bits of it, did change the No, no, so like I said, it's an automatic switchover. This is just choosing which tank to draw from first. What I would recommend is op leave one open and use it just like this, and then leave one closed. That way, when you're half <laughs> gone, yeah, yeah. that way you know you're half gone of propane, you can use this one while you're getting this one filled. Um, so it's all up to you how you want to do it, but yeah, no, it's just which which tank to draw from first. It'll always try to switch over if the one tank runs out. 
Yep, yep, yep. Um, so there's also gauges you can buy too. So that'll thread onto your tanks, tells you what the pressure is. So there's lots of different ways to kind of keep track of what kind of propane you've got and how much you're using. But uh, for the most part, propane is a backup for most of the systems. Yeah. Really, the only thing you always need propane for is the stove. Right. So, I mean, if, if you're not using the stove much, you'll probably never really run out of propane anyway. Yeah, no, at last the third subway, I know why it's empty, that would be fun. Yeah, oh yeah, no, and then, yeah, of course, you can switch this over if you want to, or however you want to do it, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just whichever one first. Uh, I guess, you know what, we'll, we'll look on the panel here, it's kind of oh. got the meat and potatoes of the whole unit here. So at the very top, we have your monitor panel, so you'll see here, there's E for empty, and F for full. <laughs> So whenever you push down on one of the, on whichever one you're oh, looking at, it'll okay. tell you kind of on that side where, where your levels are. So you have to hold it. Yeah, push and hold. Sealant is a good thing. More sealant, the better kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, but it does look like it's sealed from the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's actually another good point too. So I know we were talking about the roof and how to always kind of have a look at that. Yeah. The floor of the trailer, the very bottom. That's actually also something that if you have a look at it every once in a while to make sure there isn't any random holes that you know somehow appear from going down the highway or yeah, something. Because yeah. it's not uncommon for rocks or debris that's on the highway to actually puncture holes into the bottom of the underbelly, they mm. call it. And so just always making sure just to kind of have a look around under there every once in a while is yeah. probably the best way to make sure mice aren't going to get into the unit. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, just being just being vigilant of that is really all there is to it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Uh, have you guys seen this make into a bed? Yeah, you, you can show me one sure, more time. Sure, absolutely. That, uh, like the sales from that to me, but... Okay, yeah, no, absolutely. So the couch here, kind of just, it's a little two motion here, so up and then out. And then we've got a latch on this side. And a latch on this side. And it brings down the bed. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah, and so on either side of the bed, you can see there's AC and USB outlets. So that's just for charging, okay, or uh, just for power. Yeah. Um, I guess I can just leave this down. It really doesn't matter. A um, little bit of storage underneath each side. Each uh, each side has its own cover. Mm. Yeah, not too much to it. I think these are all push button lights over here as well. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you have your dividing curtain right here as well. Mm. Perfect. Um, where are we at here? I guess you know I didn't I didn't talk about the thermostat, which is this guy here. Okay. So right now it's in the off mode. You can see that it's highlighted right there. Mm. Um, so this will run the fan, the air conditioner, and the furnace. So when you turn on fan only mode, it's actually both the air conditioner fan and the furnace fan are going to turn on and help circulate the air. Uh, when it's a really hot day, like even today, it's starting to get pretty warm. Mm. Um, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes for the air conditioner to actually pump out really cold air. Oh. So on a hot day, it can take even a little longer than that. So you can turn on the air conditioner and have it you know, set to as cold as you want. Yeah, yeah. It might take 10 or 15 minutes before you actually notice cold, cold air coming mm -hmm. out of it. And that's just because it has to, the whole system kind of just has to start working for a little while yeah. and then the cold air will come out. So it could take a few minutes the first time you use it. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know. So don't be worried if you feel warm air pouring out of there at first or going, what the heck's going on here? Yeah. Uh, it, it will eventually put out cold air. Okay. So anyways, um, fan is using both the fans in uh, both systems there. Um, so that's the first mode is just fan. Second mode is the snowflake. So that's your air conditioner. There's uh, air going in on this side and air coming out. If you're not in this section, you yeah. can close this off and it makes the air come out of more of these I see. a little more. I see. So it's not a big trailer. You probably don't even have to close them off. Eventually the air conditioned air will get everywhere kind of thing. Uh, but if you wanted it to come out of more of these, yeah, you just close that guy off there. So yeah, with air conditioning, you just set your temperature where you're going for it. The system will come on and off on its own, always trying to make sure to go to your temperature that you have it set for. Just like one in your house kind of thing. Uh, and then the other mode is furnace, that's that little sizzle. So once again, you just set your temperature and uh, it'll always try to maintain that temperature. You'll notice that the furnace is much quieter than the air conditioner. So there's a, uh, it's, it's got less of a fan mode to it. Uh, the air conditioner is a high volume fan kind of thing. The furnace is, as you can hear, it's nice and soft. Only on gas. Yep, so there's no electric heat. Um, so only when you have your propane tanks on, and of course your battery hooked up, uh, that's that's how the furnace will run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the furnace can run off the battery, uh, just all on its own, 
the air conditioner needs that extra oomph. So you do need to have the power cord plugged gotcha. in for the gotcha. air conditioner. Yeah. But yeah, once again, you just set your temperature and it'll always try to maintain that.